Internet-Informed Guidance for the Dedicated Searcher, as read by the author David Novak. This book is an element of The Spire Project. Chapter 2, Prominence. Displaying a particularly fine mix of daring and caution during a group training battle, Albert got badly clubbed. Too quickly, his inexperience showed, and his head hurt terribly for it. Afterwards, his ever-watchful captain approached and offered words of encouragement. This greatly relieved Albert, and he felt a little less frail. Fame rested easily on the shoulders of his captain. Citizens of Toulouse looked up to him and respected his wishes. He had only to ask and doors would open, gifts would be offered, peace would be imposed. Albert had none of this. In comparison, he felt so ineffective. Two days after the training battle and back in Toulouse, the captain sent Albert on a simple errand. Seated grandly, enjoying a mid-morning drink, the captain's peace and tranquility was disturbed when a loud argument broke out nearby. Albert was told to calm the disagreement, restore peace and quiet. A young boy of barely fifteen, whom no one respected, Albert was told to intervene. Albert waited and thought. Timing would help. The arguments rose once more in pitch. Albert walked straight to them, then boldly interrupted the two shouting gentlemen. He said four words, turned, pointed to his captain, then ushered them to a nearby alehouse where he bought them both a drink. The ever-watchful captain sat once more in peace, impressed. Prominence is fame, public awareness, Whether popular or notorious, we are discussing a central feature of public life. Some of us have a fine soapbox with which to express our views, while most of us have little influence over events and public perceptions. Those of us who host TV shows and write newspaper columns are blessed by prominence. They are known. Their views are heard. They have an opportunity and perhaps the power to mold the thoughts and actions of others. While this power is different from the power to decide as given to elected officials and corporate boards, Prominent people are empowered simply because they have our attention. Their views have an audience. Prominence invades the Internet, too. We can talk of information having prominence. Prominent information is known and read. It has traffic, recognition, and influence. Since Internet users rely so heavily on global search engines to find information, Internet prominence ties tightly to search engine ranking. Search engines offer the more prominent information first. We can measure Internet prominence in about five ways. 1. Count the number of web pages that link to a given web page. The more links usually means more popularity and presumably more traffic, audience, and influence. 2. Judge the significance of the organization linking to or describing a website. When government agency websites, newspapers, and peer experts mention a project, it suggests greater significance, audience, and influence. 3. The Google toolbar has a small tab that displays page rank. This number from 0 to 10 describes how prominent Google considers a web page. Google uses this number as one of many factors in ranking web pages. To install the Google Toolbar, simply search for Google Toolbar, since we want the most prominent one. 4. Traffic numbers, not hits, but visits, also give an indication of prominence. Hits only distantly relate to public awareness. As described in the glossary, hits measure the activity of the computer serving a website. It's the number of pages and images requested of a computer, a number that varies with the number of images found on a web page. Visits, on the other hand, correspond to actual individuals looking through a website. One visitor may look through many pages, request dozens of images, and trigger over 100 hits. When considering traffic, only consider visitor counts. More visitors suggest more attention and more prominence. 5. Lastly, as a crude measurement, notice a website's position on a search engine results page. First among 10,000 suggests greater prominence, traffic, and more influence than websites listed lower on in the list. In many ways, prominence resembles business goodwill. It is revealed in public awareness and in awareness and patronage of significant voices in our community, the wealthy, the informed, and the popular. To be clear, though, prominence is the notion of public awareness, not one of these measurements. We may measure prominence using link numbers and page rank, but prominence is not equivalent to page rank or visit numbers. Many a marketing firm would do well to remember this distinction. Like CD sales to pop star fame, one indicates the other, but they are not the same. Prominence is also relative. No matter how famous we are, if another holds more fame, we are relatively less known and less influential. This may be less important on the Internet where near famous is often good enough, but to clearly appreciate a website's prominence, compare it to the prominence of competing and comparable sites. Once we understand this notion of prominence, we will begin to notice prominence everywhere on the Internet. We arrive at a website by asking a simple question and clicking at the first match given by a search engine. We rightly presume this site has prominence because of how we found it. We reach for the Yahoo directory and know all the sites listed have prominence. 
With the Google toolbar installed, we glance at the tab that indicates page rank. Oh, this page has prominence. It has a page rank of six. To look more closely at prominence, we retrieve a list of links to the page we are on. Notice the number of links, then peruse these links for a feel of the type of organizations linking to the page that interests us. Oh, this page earned links from several government departments and many private law firms. It has prominence. Later in this book, I will show you a bookmarklet, something similar to a bookmark, that lets us retrieve a list of inbound links at a single click. It is a little thing, but helpful. I will also show you how to juggle windows, so a good look at prominence will not interrupt the flow of our search. Even in detail, noticing prominence should only take a few seconds. What influences prominence? How do we get prominence? Time is obviously a factor. Insofar as prominence is reflected in the number of links pointing to a given web page, the longer a web page is on the internet, the more people have the opportunity to find and link. Promotion also helps. While I understand paid advertising usually does not count as links, any kind of promotion introduces a web page to a larger audience and helps entice additional links. Original appreciated content helps too. We want an audience thrilled, or at least pleasantly surprised, by our content. We want a memorable web address and a colorful, memorable visitor experience. We also want more traditional promotion, like a good newspaper article and a well-known customer bragging about our excellent service. We want name recognition, choice affiliations, and the appearance of significance. In short, we want all the benefits that traditional public relations and promotion offers the non-internet world. If this sounds like a book being judged as much by the quality of its cover as its contents, then you have the right idea. Prominence has its imperfection. We use this concept of prominence in two ways. Firstly, prominence is an asset belonging to the web address that attracts our attention. As an asset, it has a monetary value. This view of prominence directs how we promote and market information. Most Internet users spend most of their time in the prominent portions of the Internet, so projects driven by a need for attention must generate or acquire prominence. Secondly, prominence describes a feature of Internet information. Prominent information has unique characteristics we may desire and appreciate. Perhaps we seek only prominent information to answer our question. Perhaps we want to hear the views of those with the loudest voices. This time, prominence belongs not to the address, but to the information that earns the attention. Prominence as an asset. Anyone marketing on the Internet today quickly learns that prominence is a primary ingredient to achieving anything on the Internet. It is an asset. We need this asset if we wish to influence the Internet world. If we do not have this asset, we must buy it or borrow it. Albert's solution to calming an argument was simple. He represented himself as doing the bidding of his captain. He borrowed his captain's prominence. This was not always necessary. In earlier times, and still in certain sectors of the Internet, prominence would flow easily to the deserving. Prominence depended only on content value. Write an important FAQ and people would find, read, and tell others without any further intervention. Write excellent software, then simply place it on a popular free software archive. This was enough to introduce it to the world and spawn the attention it deserved. As the Internet matured, however, the need for awareness grew. Little can be accomplished today without it. Vocalist Bernadette Robinson, whose daughter attends school with mine, lamented one day how her newly developed website appeared so far down the search engine results page. She feared clients wishing to hire her vocal talents would find their way first to the website of a speaker's bureau and not notice her own website. This has a financial sting, since a speaker's bureau would simply call her, arrange an event, then take a sizable commission. Of course, Bernadette's new website had no prominence. No one linked to her page. According to ranking algorithms, it belonged near the bottom of a list of sites describing Bernadette Robinson. After all, it's not a popular page, and no popular page mentions it. Informing the search engines of the website's existence and asking them to index the website does not change the fact it has no prominence. Yes, this completely overlooks the fact that this is her official page, that this page leads directly to her as an individual, that this page is by Bernadette Robinson. This fact simply does not enter into the ranking equation. As a solution, I added a single link to the bottom of spireproject.com pointing to bernadetterobinson.com. The webpage at spireproject.com has prominence. It has a page rank of six and numerous links from university and library websites. As I write, the prominence I lend her by linking is enough to place her website third on a Google search for her name. Other factors are at work in search engine ranking, but Bernadette's difficulties stem from not having sufficient internet prominence to be heard. Even with her name in the title, even as her official website, she needs prominence to reach people seeking her. As a second example, following a lecture I delivered last year to a class studying public relations, I spoke with a student considering a job with a search engine optimization firm. 
Now, I don't appreciate search engine optimization much. Too many operators are ill-informed and too slick for my liking. However, there is a need for these services and a certain future for the industry. With this in mind, I asked the student, is the firm prominent? A decent track record and a healthy Internet prominence would indicate to me a greater likelihood of succeeding in this industry and therefore more opportunity for a fresh public relations graduate. I advised her against working for a new, unproven business. Prominence would tell us if the firm was a recent or established player in the industry. In this case, relative prominence speaks of corporate strength. Any fly-by-night operator can make a flashy website, but few can create a meaningful nexus of links, recognition, and perceived importance. As an aside, if you ever use prominence in business, make sure you use relative prominence, and always glance at the list of references for the appropriateness of their endorsements. I occasionally notice speakers on wealth creation have websites with a good number of links suggesting respect. Look closely, however, and I see few links are from appropriate sources. Too many of these links are simply self-made garbage. Prominence deserves a book on its own. It has diverse applications from credit management to web promotion to web design. Internet marketing focuses on some aspects of prominence, but often overlooks or diminishes the need to develop a footpath beyond the search engines. Fix ailing links, compare, contrast, and mine the footpath from bearable sites. Now reach beyond links to other types of endorsements. This topic is not the purpose of this book, so I will leave it for another day. Some guidance is present in a white paper at spireproject.com slash white.htm. But suffice to say, a researcher's perspective exists, and it differs from the perspective usually associated with internet marketing. The need for prominence in business will return to us when we discuss how it affects the publication process. The commercial model is only one of three ways to publish information. A very significant model, it depends on achieving significant prominence to be heard and capitalizing on this attention. Authors and organizations publishing in this way but unable to achieve sufficient relative prominence fail and often fail miserably. This dilemma means that while the Internet is often portrayed as a free or near-free medium to publish in, those who need or seek attention must generate or purchase this asset called prominence to be heard. The Internet is not a free medium for them at all. Prominence as a trait. Prominent information has something that non-prominent information lacks, primarily a loud voice and the presumption of significance. As we wander the Internet, we may prefer to dwell on prominent resources. We may seek prominent information. Perhaps we wish to hear only from influential and prominent voices. Perhaps we want to download only the most famous Google toolbar, or visit only the most prominent astronomy picture archives. Let us now discuss prominence as a trait. When I speak the experience of comparable speakers who discuss the Internet, I want to hear most from speakers who are acknowledged experts. While in the past, acknowledged may mean published, and specifically published with a famous book, on Internet topics, such a restriction is too brutal. Many Internet experts do not bother to publish journal articles. I publish only the occasional article myself. Prominence is the answer. I look for speakers with prominent websites. If a suggested colleague publishes a website with a page rank of six, a prominent website indeed, I will listen with more attention than I would if the colleague has a page rank of two. Similarly, if a colleague publishes a page that has earned links in the Yahoo directory, the Open Directory Project, ODP, and several university websites, this colleague has earned my attention. I may quickly abandon their website, once I discover it is aimed at primary school students, but the suggested significance is sufficient to earn my initial attention. This brings to mind one of the least enjoyable aspects of publishing on the Internet, plagiarism. The second time I encountered gross copying of my website involved a graduate of library science who lives in India. For several years, I was unable to locate a valid email address with which to demand the pages be removed. I eventually did reach the person involved, and he apologized, saying he did not know the material had become publicly indexed. That was the trouble, of course. Yes, he doctored a copy of my text, then replaced my name with his as author. But so what if it remained relatively unknown? Unfortunately, his website earned a listing in the Open Directory project under Computers, Internet Searching, Help, and Tutorials. Yes, the same directory listing my Spire project and Information Research FAQ once listed an almost exact copy of my work supposedly published by a library student's graduate in India. The doctored website attained a level of prominence that lent its significance and some authority. I fear it also tossed my own authorship of the material in doubt. A reader who visits my website second could well conclude that I copied the material from the Indian author. And why not believe so? A library studies graduate listed in a prominent directory sounds reputable. Herein lies my solution. I first published an article describing the infringement in detail. I next used the article to have the infringing pages stripped of its open directory project listing. 
Essentially, I tore the prominence from the doctored web page. As it returned to relative anonymity, the copies no longer warranted my concern. I do not fear plagiarism. It is a compliment of sorts. I greatly fear plagiarism married to prominence. As an aside, my article about the infringement has enough prominence to be noticed, as indeed are these words here. I leave a persistent embarrassment that the event occurred, perhaps more than my Indian fan deserves. In the future, I fear savvy business strategists will use similar tactics to intentionally tarnish the Internet reputation of competitors. Internet reputation is not often discussed or even recognized as something of value. The keen response to attacks of this nature involves publishing a rebuttal on a page with prominence that directly links to or mirrors the title and text of the page in question. I saw this executed beautifully by the British Wind Energy Association, BWEA, in their response to what I considered a rather biased publication by the Country Guardian titled The Case Against Wind Farms. The very similarly titled BWEA Corrects Some Misconceptions in the Case Against Wind Farms further mirrored much of the text of the Country Guardian article. Gifted with prominence, their rebuttal is referenced close to the Country Guardian article in many searches. Of course, this avenue is unavailable to those without prominence to spare. Those without a loud voice are more defenseless to misrepresentation and plagiarism. Oh, the horror, the horror. Back to the topic of prominence as a trait. Not long ago, I received an invitation to speak in southern England next time I travel there. The invitation came from a gentleman working in the local council, but something in his letter suggested he had talent of his own, so I searched for some background on him. His email address led to the local council's website, but I was unsettled to find just two pages mention his name, both only in passing. Someone with talent would have more exposure. They would have more prominence. Did this invitation come from a novice? The name was too common to search directly, so to find my answer I added a geographical marker, the name of the city where he works. Indeed, he was until recently an independent business advisor with experience in this field. I surmised he only recently stepped into the government post. Finding the prominence I had suspected reassures me that the invitation is heartfelt and valid from someone who understands what I try to say. Without this evidence of prominence, of links and discussion and advice mentioning his name, I may well conclude the offer was made from someone without experience in the field and given without much thought. Do you see how prominence entwines with the notion of trust and apparent significance? Prominence obviously has a role in quality assessment, the topic of the next chapter. However, let us first look at prominence as a search engine considers it. Search engines used in a blunt manner use prominence as a proxy for importance. By blunt, I mean a simple search, the tossing of a few words at a search engine. A blunt search leads to 10,000 matches or more. In a blunt search, we look only at a few of the many qualifying matches, so what we see is heavily dependent on prominence. Ask ourselves this question, are we seeking a prominent resource? If the answer is yes, then we want the assistance of tools that lead us to prominent resources. We want to search a global search engine in a general blunt manner. We want to visit global directories. We want to use these tools because they depend on prominence to filter information. If our answer is no, if the information we seek is unlikely to be prominent, then we will regret staying with tools that direct us towards prominence. We want to move beyond the prominent portion of the Internet. To better understand this idea, let us contrast prominence with a closely related notion of importance. Importance. Something important is something we value. For an internet search, this primarily means valuable content, but you and I set the criteria for which information is judged as important. Perhaps information must be recent, perhaps comprehensive, perhaps definitive or influential or popular. Our criteria changes with the questions we ask. What is important, what is significant, depends on what we need to answer our question. Importance, a measure of information value, differs from prominence, a measure of public awareness, in that prominence does not vary with our question. These two concepts obviously entwine. Many prominent sites are important. Many important sites earn a justified prominence. Nevertheless, differences between importance and prominence lie at the center of our frustration with the Internet and define the most significant division in search technique. As I mentioned earlier, I believe we should select a global search engine based on size, good field searching, and familiarity. With these criteria, I choose Google and all the web, two important and significant global search engines I am very familiar with. If I judge search engines by different criteria, like the value of the first 10 responses to basic questions, then perhaps some of the younger search engines with novel approaches and database mining would be more important. Tools with smaller databases or fewer fields, like Ask.com, might lead such a list. Importance depends on my criteria. 
prominence is an independent measure quite unrelated to my needs and criteria. Google and Yahoo are the two most prominent global search engines as I write this line, not because they do what I want, but because these two names lead any list of famous global search engines. As a second example, the Library of Congress is a most important and prominent book resource. It is important because their freely searchable catalog lists over 29 million books and offers a very refined search with over 30 fields to choose from. It is prominent because many people know its name, use the catalog, and mention it online. This prominence is evident in how Yahoo tells us 5.8 million web pages mention www.loc.gov. And since prominence is best understood in a relative manner, the British Library has 0.68 million, or an eighth as many references. As a book resource, my local library is much more important to me than the Library of Congress. My local library is important and significant because it lends books, has friendly staff, and can be found just down the road. It probably has no importance to you. It has little prominence, too. Few beyond my suburb would know and recommend it. If I am seeking my local library website, I will not find it by sending library to a global search engine, simply because I'm not searching for a prominent site, not as I just phrased my question. If I insist on searching bluntly, then I must phrase my question so that my local library is the most prominent answer to my question. On this occasion, I need to type only library Turek, since Turek Library is the most prominent library in the suburb of Turek. In general, blunt searches succeed not because we add another word, that just reshuffles the deck, so to speak. No, they succeed because we add the very word that serves to rephrase our question so that the information we seek becomes the most prominent answer to our question. Recommendation engines. Look closely at the difference between importance and prominence. Some of our searches will benefit best from prominent resources. Indeed, if we can phrase a question as a request for a prominent resource, then blunt use of a global search engine is our strongest ally. Ask search engines and directories first, since they will undoubtedly recommend the most prominent resources. Their algorithms judge prominence in such a refined way, with such precision. They know prominence. However, ask a question that requires the assistance of a page we do not think will be prominent, and search engines cannot so easily help us. Not the blunt use of a search engine. Consumed by the assumption that prominent information is important, a global search engine will recommend prominent resources, in the hopes that such sites will satisfy us. In Chapter 1, we saw how many of the world's most significant international organizations publish country profiles on the Internet. Publications like the CIA World Factbook, first published to the web in 1992, have enormous fame. I remember it as one of the very first U.S. government documents to achieve celebrity status. There was always something so satisfying about reading something by the secret of CIA. However, many important and significant country profiles, like those of the Pan American Health Organization, and the obscure CIFP project of the Canadian Department of Foreign Affairs did not have significant prominence to reach our attention easily. When I first encountered country indicators of foreign policy, it was barely known beyond those directly involved. The country profiles of the OECD, while famous and well-loved in print, were not widely known to be online, despite many of the economic profiles being over 70 pages long and filled with world-class expert commentary. Importance as I judge it, primarily authoritative quality content, simply does not equate to prominence. We simply will not find such documents by searching for country profiles. An important but near-anonymous profile could easily rank 10,000th and never reach our attention. This situation is not ideal. We would prefer search engines recommend important resources, but search engines would list the resources that match our criteria, whatever criteria we have for today's question. Indeed, this is one of the aims of generating specific search queries. We try to convey to the search engine just what is important to us. However, search engines can't judge websites by criteria we don't supply. Failing to know that we want the library down the road, we type library and get links to the Internet Public Library, the Library of Congress, and the British Library. These are, after all, the three most prominent libraries on the Internet world. Prominence is used to fill the gaps between what we want and what we tell the search engines we want. Uh, let me explain this another way. Next time we approach a search engine and undertake a search that is not specific, that leads to a list of 10,000 matches or more, then we essentially proceed our search query with the words, please suggest some prominent resources on. A Google search for Jupiter is actually asking, please suggest some prominent resources on Jupiter. A search for Internet search skills is actually asking, 
please suggest some prominent resources with the words Internet Search Skills. Quietly adding this preamble to our search query makes for a clearer distinction between occasions when we want the most prominent resources and when we don't. Please suggest some prominent resources on Jane Austen is not going to help us find a doctoral dissertation on Jane Austen's role in advancing 19th century feminism. The most prominent resource on feminism Jane Austen is no better, since we seek a special, unique resource that will never attract much attention and would never become prominent. As our searches become more challenging, we will find this bias towards prominence often gets in our way. Any comprehensive, definitive, or detailed search is by definition not a search for prominence. Any search for quality is only indirectly tied to prominence, as we will see in Chapter 3. Here is the essence of this argument. Search engines recommend. They recommend prominent resources. Yes, the epiphany for many readers is this. Search engines don't search. Not when they return 10,000 matches or more. They merely recommend. Used in a blunt manner, search engines are better called recommendation engines. Let me justify this label carefully, for if misunderstood, it is an insult. Firstly, when we search a global search engine, retrieve a list of 10,000 matches, then stay within the first 50, what have we done? We ignore 99.5% of the answer, right? 50 out of 10,000, 0.5%. We never look at answers 51 through 10,000. Select matches randomly, and we could suggest that we have a sample. But we now know of this bias towards prominence. Best to call them recommendations and avoid the suggestion we search anything. Say we look at the first 50 matches. How is this different from looking at a list of 50 recommendations? How is it different from looking at 50 recommendations from the Yahoo directory or the Open Directory project? The only difference deals with how specific we ask our question. Indeed, a search for library or motorcycle on Yahoo's search engine provides much the same answer as the same search on Yahoo directory. How could it be otherwise? Both use similar criteria. We do not search the Internet, not when we toss a word or two at a search engine. Instead, we ask for a recommendation. Search engine, we say, I'm interested in a library. Please recommend a few of the most prominent. In response, we get addresses for the Internet Public Library, the Library of Congress, and the British Library. Now that we know the bias of global search engines, and prominence is a bias common to many search tools, not just global search engines, we have defined the circumstances when we want their help and when we don't. I'm doing a background check on the activities of a colleague, Dean Gates, who just started a conversation with me on serendipity. I like to know something of the people I communicate with. I will peruse anything he has written. However, a blunt search for Dean Gates will not help me. A search for, quote, Dean Gates, close quote, translates as, please suggest some prominent resources with the phrase Dean Gates. And this just strikes me as a really bad way to search for past statements by one specific Dean Gates. In this case, I search for his email address as well as his nom de guerre, t.deangates. Both searches are specific and lead to fewer than 200 results. Seeking information unlikely to be prominent, we either rephrase our question to ask in a way the information is prominent, or we discard our blunt approach in favor of another approach, perhaps a precise search. Rephrasing our question is often easiest. For example, a global search engine will gleefully supply us with the most prominent local directory of meeting rooms, but would have difficulty coughing up the addresses to small meeting rooms individually. We just need to ask in a way that positions the answer we seek as the most prominent answer to our question. If we cannot phrase a question to highlight prominence, then use another technique, like feedback or precision or triangulation or the page next door as described in the next few chapters. Much of the success of these other search techniques rests in how they help us rephrase our question into something anchored to prominence. Prominence slash importance is the most significant division in Internet search technique. Whereas once we discuss the difference between browsing and searching, between directories and search engines, thanks to prominence ranking, both browsing and searching lead to similar information. Today, it is far more significant to distinguish a search as leading to either specific information or prominent information. What kind of information do we seek today? Tis true, there's magic in the web. A sibyl, in her prophetic fury, sowed the work. William Shakespeare. Yes, William Shakespeare wrote about the web. To confirm this, just look for a really big database of Shakespearean quotations. Do we want the most prominent database? Of course we do. Don't lead to someone's list of ten favorite quotes. We do not want an obscure quotation either. 
Nothing Shakespeare wrote will ever be obscure. We want a really big searchable database of the complete works of Shakespeare. The most famous one will do very nicely, thank you. A blunt search of a search engine or a quick perusal of a large directory will surely assist us in this quest. However, if we search instead for a quote by some famous historical figure about the web, not thinking of Shakespeare in particular, don't toss a word or two at a search engine. Don't approach a large directory. It won't help. Our question is not phrased in such a way as to benefit from prominence ranking. What would we search for? Historical figure, quotation, internet, or web? We don't want the most prominent historical figure. We don't want the most prominent quotation on the web. Yes, in a sense, we have a bad question. That aside, when we want something obscure, specific, comprehensive, or quietly unique, we will probably not find our answer in a list of prominent resources. Just on this example, consider the subtle differences between searching a global search engine for, quote, William Shakespeare, close quote, quote, William Shakespeare quotations, and Shakespeare quotation database. All three searches are blunt searches. All three return far more than 10,000 matches. All three include prominent databases of Shakespearean quotations. Only the third query positions the database we hope to find as the most prominent answer to our question. In summary, we want to use our search tools in a way that brings out their best qualities and acknowledges their worst. Prominence is the specialty of global search engines. So is precision, but never at the same time. Which applies depends on the number of matches found. If we have 10,000 matches or more, we use the search engines to point out prominent resources. We use our search engines to show us the brightest stars. If we have 200 matches or fewer, we have precision. We search. A specific and precise search leads to very different information than a blunt request for prominent recommendations. Improvements on prominence. Prominence is not the only influence on search engine ranking these days. Search engines rank more subtly and demonstrate more finesse. On occasions, search engines assume we prefer recent resources or national resources. Pages rapidly gaining prominence probably rank higher than similar pages with falling prominence. If we type two words like Jupiter Pictures, search engines will presume we prefer these words appear together, appear in the title, appear in the linking text, the subheadings, and sometimes the meta tags. If one of several words is relatively rare, search engines will place extra weight on the position and frequency of that word. Furthermore, search engines continually improve and refine their ranking algorithms. The bias towards prominence is not as severe as it was a couple years ago. And notice I use the words bias and preference. This is another way of thinking about the effects of prominence. Global search engines prefer prominent resources. Search engine bias drives us towards the prominent sector of the Internet, where we usually, but not always, wish to be. Prominence ranking is a vast improvement on earlier ranking systems, like the reliance on word frequency. Besides, what would we have a search engine offer us? We ask for Jupiter pictures. We want and get some of the most popular and respected of the 6.5 million matches. This is not a fault. It is a problem only if we don't want such resources. It is a problem only tossed up by our willingness to look at 50 matches out of many millions and call it a search. Global search engines deliver recommendations splendidly. They do not deliver so well on tasks we should not ask them, but ask anyway for want of another search tool. Comprehensive or complete searches require precision and something else we will cover in time. Unique but unpopular or unrecognized resources require luck and time or some kind of advanced knowledge of where to look. When we ask more than search engines are designed to deliver, we may still find they deliver admirably, answering perhaps 90% of our questions with ease. However, this only underlines how much we shy away from asking the more challenging questions. Why are we avoiding these questions left unanswered by the loudest among us? The next significant improvement to search engines seems certain to be Yahoo's efforts in social searching. Recommendations now tied to prominence can be replaced by peer prominence, perhaps better called peer respect. Some social tools already exist. They help us find music we like, CD Now, Rate Your Music, people with common interests, LinkedIn network, and blogs we should be reading. The same approach works with internet resources. Ask.com invites us to browse a search tool biased by the preference of acknowledged experts. In a sense, this is the next step in the path of interpreting more and more from a given link. At first, meta search engines counted links. Next, Google measured the popularity of links. Now, Ask.com measures the presumed knowledge behind a link. I like this idea, not least because it mimics one of the techniques we will delve into in Chapter 4, that of the link companion. 
However, changing bias does not remove bias. Social searches will bias their results another way, towards peer-recognized resources and away from quiet non-institutional achievers. My dream tool will allow me to scale the degree of dependence on peer input, prominence, and reliance on word frequency according to my needs. I suspect we will gradually see this emerge in the form of a collection of different global search engines, each biased in a slightly different manner. Our problem remains, of course. Just what do we want to notice? And what are we willing to overlook of a search that returns a million matches? To conclude this chapter, let me state this simply. The global search engine is a simple tool that works in one of two simple ways. Either it recommends prominent resources, or it allows us to search in a precise, specific manner. If we use it in a blunt manner, recognize search engine bias. Use it to our advantage. At least do not use it to our disadvantage. I have more to say about search engine bias and recommendations. I have more to say about precision. However, we must first learn about the nature of quality, since often we do not seek a prominent or specific answer. We seek a quality answer. And this draws us in a very different direction.